Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about coroutine jobs and how we can wait for them and cancel them. So whenever we launch a new coroutine, it actually returns a job, which we can save in a variable. So when we write something like global scope dot launch, and I will launch it in the default dispatcher, so dispatchers dot default, then this launch function will actually return a job. And we can save this job in a variable. So val job is equal to global scope dot launch. And what we can now do with this job is we can, for example, wait for it to finish by using job dot join. And note that this join function is actually a suspend function. So we cannot execute it from within our main thread by default. But for this example, I will use the run blocking function, which you know from the last video which gives us a coroutine scope in which we are able to execute suspend functions. So what this join function will actually do now is it will block our thread until this coroutine is finished. And if it is finished, it will go on and execute the lines after job.join. So we can add a log here, log.d, pass the tag, and simply write um, main thread is continuing. And what I will do now is I will go into our coroutine and run a repeat block. I'll repeat it five times, whatever we put inside of this block. And we simply want to put a lock here. Actually, I can copy that line, paste it here, and just print coroutine is still working. And after that, simply delay our coroutine for, let's say, one second. And if we now run our app and take a look in Logcat, you will see it prints, coroutine is still working all the time. And after five times, it prints, main thread is continuing because we called job.join. So we waited for the finish of our coroutine and then we went on with our main thread and printed that log statement here. So that is what joining will do. And the next function I want to show you is how to actually cancel a job. We can simply do that by job.cancel. And we can pass a cancellation exception here, but I will leave it blank, so it's just null. Then I will block our main thread for two seconds, so call the delay function in the one blocking block for 2000 milliseconds. So the first thing that happens is it will launch our coroutine that will still execute this piece of code five times. It is saved in a job. And after it is started, we go into that one blocking block, delay our main thread for two seconds. After two seconds, we cancel that job that is still running at that time because the job takes about five seconds, five times a um, thousand milliseconds is five, th five seconds. And then we print main thread is continuing. So I can actually show you that this job won't go on if we cancel it. So if we now run this, you can see coroutine is still working, still working, but then main thread is continuing because we canceled that job. However, canceling a coroutine is not always as easy as it is here because cancellation is actually cooperative, which means our coroutine needs to be set up to be correctly canceled. So there needs to be enough time to tell our coroutine that it has been canceled. And because we use the suspend function delay here, our coroutine is paused most of the time. So during that pause, we have enough time to tell it that it has been canceled. But I will set up a coroutine that cannot be canceled that easily to demonstrate you that you have to take care about that in some scenarios. And for that, I will add a recursive Fibonacci function here. I will just paste it and you can write it off. Um, that will just that I will just execute several times in our coroutine. And I chose this function because for larger numbers that quite need some time to be executed and with that, I can show you actually how that cancellation works if you have a long running job. So let's go up to our job here and I will remove that code here inside of our launch block. And instead, first add a log, um, log message here that says starting long running calculation. 
then I will start a for loop and loop from i in not one from 30 to 40 because I tried around with those numbers and they don't take too long but they take some time that we can actually see what happens here and inside of that for loop I will add another log that will print the result of our calculation for each i so we can write result for i is equal to and then insert i and then simply call fib with i and after the for loop printing ending long running calculation and i also want to change this log to cancelled job so what this will do it will take our fibonacci function here and execute it for i between 30 and 40 so it will calculate each Fibonacci number from 30 to 40 which will take some time because this function is recursive which you can see it calls itself here and because of that this coroutine will take some time to be executed and I will I will show you that even though we cancel this job it won't actually be cancelled so let's see if we execute this app take a look in logcat starting long-running calculation it prints our results here. Here it cancelled our job, but our coroutine is still printing new results. And if it is finished, we are at i equal to 40 now, then it's ending its long-running calculation, even though it was cancelled before. But why is that? So the reason for that is that our coroutine is actually so busy with this calculation inside of this for loop here, that there is no time to check for cancellation. And because our coroutine does not use a suspend function where it could be paused for some time, there is no pause in which we can tell it that it has been cancelled. So we have to check manually if this coroutine has been cancelled or not to cancel it properly. And we can do this by simply writing an if statement inside of our for loop to check if our coroutine is still active. And if it is active, then we want to execute the next calculation for the next i. And if we now execute that app again and take a look in logcat, it will start our long running calculation. Then it cancelled the job and directly after that it is ending the long running calculation. So it is not executing the job for i is equal to 38, 39 and 40. So now our cancellation actually works fine. In practice, usually the reason why we want to cancel a coroutine is due to some timeout. So let's say you have an network call that just takes too much time and you want to cancel it. For that, coroutines come with a really useful suspend function called with timeout, which we can just wrap around our long running calculations or our run long encode by writing with timeout, passing the milliseconds for the timeout, which I will choose 3000 milliseconds here. So that means what this function will do is it will execute this code, but if it needs longer than three seconds, it will cancel it automatically without needing us to cancel it manually. So if we now delete this one blocking block here because we don't want to cancel our job manually now and run our app again, take a look in logcat, you can see it just starts as usual, but after three seconds it is ending the long running calculation and cancelling our job automatically. So that with timeout function is actually the equivalent to starting a new coroutine and delaying it for three seconds and then simply cancelling that job here. So this function does both of that and you should of course prefer to use it. If this video helped you to understand coroutine jobs then please leave a like and comment below and if there is anything you didn't understand, then don't mind asking your questions in the comments so I can answer them. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.